<laughs> Alright guys, how's it going? Give us a second while we get everything finalized and set up here. And looks like we are. And looks like we are. Now to just run some sound checks. Hey guys, how's it going? So we're going to be continuing on with the Normaya progress today. And um, Vicky's going to be working on her, continuing to work on the horn pattern that she was wrapping up on last night. As well as possibly doing some touch-ups and some additives to the ears over here. Now I'll go ahead and grab the uh, sword here shortly. That's what I was working on last night. We're now into the uh, glue coating phase. So that should be a relatively easy process at this point. Oh, checking the levels again. Okay. Alright. Looks like we are pretty good. And I'll run into the sea Follow this heart that escapes from me It escapes from me And I'm lost Forget me All I was And become Okay. 
How's it going, guys? So, go ahead, catching back up on progress on what I was working on last night. Um, mostly it was just getting layers down on the sheet. Um, so, we finished adding the details to the side, basically adding the additional rings that raise up on the top and then the bottom uh, butted up section there to add some fun little just details to it. That'll be painted gold once we get it done. But I started layering on the Elmer's glue, which you can tell that it dries very, very clear. Uh, I've only got two layers on it at this point, and I'm going to need at least six layers on here uh, just to start covering up and um, adjust that volume a little bit. Just to cover up some of the bumps and crevices um, that weren't sanded down perfectly smooth. And that'll just happen with um, more layers of glue as we go. One of the good things about using Elmer's glue is uh, it will dry even on a surface. So you get it very, very thin, but if you've, you have any cracks or crevices, the glue will seep in there and create an even level field for you. So it's very good for like long flat pieces of uh, objects. So again, like the sheath, like the uh, blade on the sword here. And the sword has about six coats on it. And here, I'll pull it up to the mic here. Has a bit of a plastic sound to it, which is what we want, because it helps make the foam a little more rigid. And then it will also add a nice sheen to it once we get the, uh, the paint on. And it eliminates the squish that uh, the foam naturally has, you can see here in the handle. And then right now, paint-wise, we just have the gold up here and then the gold over here, and then a little bit of black in here. The handle gets left alone because we are going to be wrapping that with cord uh, a little bit later. And that'll happen after I finish layering up the, uh, the sheath, because one of the other things I'm doing with the sheath is I keep the sword inside of it to help maintain its shape while I'm adding in all the glue to the outside. Um, because it is hollow and because it is made out of foam, it isn't very hard naturally on its own. So I want to make sure that it doesn't accidentally get squished in and deformed while I'm still adding the glue layers. Once I get all the glue on there, it should harden it up and make it a lot more durable. Whoops, and taking out the cat sheets. Hmm. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab a few more things for Vicky's project. And, oh, gotta test one other connection issue here.
And we're back! Aha! Getting my vat of glue for the sheath. <laughs> this is a fun and somewhat messy process. Normally I'd be on the floor, but Vicky isn't here yet. So I'm going to do my best to not get glue all over her very nice cutting mat. <laughs> Now we bring out the jug, and we'll just add that to our little Tupperware container. Alright. And yes, this is really just Elmer's school glue. <laughs> and let's go ahead and get a layer down. Now, main thing with this is you don't want to go on too heavy of a coat. This is going to take a lot of thin coats. We're going to make sure it dries into a nice hard layer. There we go. Now it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but I do have an area on here where something had fallen over, a rod that we had, and it wound up causing a small dent in the foam because it was still in its, a, uh, in its foam phase. And it was thin, so it created a small cut on the sheath, but again, it's not an issue because the glue, I just make sure to have a little bit more in that area, and it seeps down into the, uh, the crevice and then that will harden along with the top layer, making it as if it was never there. I know, riveting entertainment, right? <laughs> The next step is watching the glue dry. I heard tale there were stations dedicated to that once. Now the top section I want to be a little more careful of, just because I don't want to get glue on the spray painted nice looking sword that I have going on right now. And it just means I have to be a little less aggressive up here. Now the way I'm doing it here is, obviously I can only access one side at a time. Uh, you can hang the object up from uh, like a, I had it like clamped up from the, uh, from the ceiling by the sword hilt here, so I could paint all sides at once. However, because of how long the sheath is, it was creating some pooling down at the bottom. And that was, that would create lumps if I left it that way. So I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of speed and just do uh, one plane at a time. So I'll do this top section and the sides, and then once this dries, flip it over, coat the other section, then rinse and repeat. 
Um, like I had said last time, the glue does have probably like five to six hour drying time. And so the whole process for coating this is basically just a week long project. Um, not exactly intense. You just gotta you know carve out five minutes to go downstairs or wherever your props at, add on a layer of coating, and then you know let it sit. That's the kind of stuff I'm typically pretty bad at because when I work on something, I want to you know hurry up and finish it and like hurry up get it done. So I always hate letting things dry. It's always frustrating. A few more coats and then we're done on this guy. go. Now it's looking nice and shiny. Something else you can do if you're coating a project and it's very hard to see the glue, you can actually take some food dye and mix that in with the glue and that'll make it very apparent like which areas you've coated and which areas you haven't because it does um, go on very very thin and you don't want it to be bulky. So if you're doing this and you're having trouble spotting what you have and haven't glued, that might be a nice little trick to help you out. Not super necessary though. And I did decide that I'm gonna start working on Percival for, uh, for my costume. Aha, yes. <laughs> internet is not being super friendly right now. I'm gonna chalk that up to prime time on Friday night. Everybody's jumping online. Everybody's FaceTiming. So we might have some frame drops here and there. Not super critical with it being a craft stream, but hopefully the audio isn't glitching out on you. If it becomes unbearable, just let me know. spots. There we go. If you have any questions about anything we're working on or steps that we're taking on our current projects, feel free to just let us know in the chat. Or if you just have any general questions or want to have any uh, conversations about some of our other costumes, feel free to let us know as well. All right, now to set this guy aside and off camera to dry. Hi, Gibbon. What's up, Gibbon? So I'm down in the basement, which means the cat really wants to get her hands on her treats. We'll wait until a little bit later in the stream <laughs> for that. But she's become a ridiculous beggar when she's down here. Okay. Now taking a look back on, again, what Vicky was working on on the previous streams, just to give you updates in case you missed it. These are the giraffe ears that she finished working on the base. You can see as I turn it here, the design is just two pieces of one mil, one shorter than the other, to create a channel for the actual ear to slide in on. And then we used some foam clay to add the details of the ridge. Now the ears don't need to be super detailed because like many animes, 
Um, there's actually not a lot of detail that goes into the actual ears on elves and things like that, just because it'd be a pain to, you know, draw. So most of the ears, and including um, Normaya's here, are relatively simple shapes and with very few, like, shading details on them. Um, so that makes things easy for us, because then it's just a matter of... Uh, coloring and shading these guys after we add the um, a little more structure to uh, make sure they stay on the uh, stay on our heads and then the horn Vicky had three layers of tape going on this and she has finished drawing out her pattern on it so now it's just a matter of actually slicing the sucker off and translating it into a flat plane uh, pattern to be put together. And it looks like that's going to be four pieces of foam sectioned off. All right, now I'll be right back. Just have to rinse this guy. Always important when you have a glue brush, rinse it out right away after you're done using it so that you can continue to use this brush and you don't wind up going through like 10 of them. So I'll be right back, guys. Be charming at the work with people that are slightly stuttery and a little wacky. <laughs> Solid. Exactly. Is it okay if I reclaim the table? Yeah, you can totally reclaim the table. Sweet. I wiped off all the glue. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Do I have a phone charger accessible down here? Let me get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My phone's almost dead. <laughs> no problem. Hey guys! I do exist. <laughs> Are we checking this? Oh, cool. Or just plug it into the splitter. Take it out of the... Just plug the cord into that. Ah, ah. <laughs> I mean, I realize. I'm smart sometimes. I just saw down here you treat They're not They can micro to Marshall. Oh. Never mind that. I <laughs> All right. We some stuff here. There we go. Sweet. Thank you. All right. A return from work. Ready. Do cosplay work. All right. Last we left off, we had just finished putting three layers of tape on our Maya's horns. And they're looking so cute! We drew out where all of our seam lines are gonna go. Put in some registration marks, because I was smart. And I even marked which seams I'm putting together in which order. And I decided I'm gonna change up one of those real quick before I take this all apart and confuse myself. That real quick. So now, I think I'm ready to cut this apart. So how this is gonna go together is we have two pieces on the front side. We've got a top piece and a bottom piece. And then we have two pieces on the back side. Again, a top piece and a bottom piece. So the order I'm gonna put things together is I'm gonna put together the front half so the top piece to the bottom piece first, then I'm gonna put together the back half, the top piece and the bottom piece. So then it, that's gonna give me two halves. And then I will put together the inner seam, the inside seam first, because this one I want to stay as round as possible. 
And then I will, last but not least, put together the outer seam that has this nice ridge on it. Uh, because if those edges don't meet perfectly, I can bevel them uh, to get that angle. I think that will be the smartest way to do it. All right, now it's time to do the scariest part, which is cutting this thing apart and praying it holds up okay. So here we go. <laughs> this is scary. This is where I find out if I put enough uh, tape on this or if I made a grave error somewhere. <laughs> this is also where I find out that my scissors are dull. I can fix that. I own a scissor sharpener that I often forget I have. Ugh. Not the greatest sound. Sorry about that. It's a little better. These scissors have seen some work over the years. <laughs> so as I'm cutting it out, I want to make sure and be careful that I don't uh, distort the shape of the tin foil underneath of it any more than I have to. Ugh, that's terrible noise. I'm so sorry. All right, Let's see if that did us any better. Eh, eh, eh. It's a little better. Slowly but steadily, we got this thing apart. I'm trying to cut just the tape and not the tin foil underneath because once I have this all apart, I will do my best to lay the tape flat on some poster board so that I have some nice sturdy and flat pattern pieces. Come on, baby. You can do it, I believe in you. Come on, scissors. Here we go. Uh. It's important to have sharp scissors, and I do not, but that's okay. These might be too far gone for even the scissor sharpener to fix. I'm gonna see if I have better scissors. Pairs of scissors. <laughs> Let's see which ones work. Eh. Do my bidding. Nope, those suck. <laughs> third pair. Hey, third pair's the charm. careful as I cut this point that I don't distort it too much. 
I feel like I could probably do this with a box knife. But I'm also kind of terrified to try. Because <laughs> I like my hands undestroyed. <laughs> kind of kind of fond of all of my fingers. Please do not destroy your hands. They I will not. magic and heal people. My hands are magic and heal people. This is why we take good care of my hands. Yeah. All right. So now we got one seam cut, and we can see that tin foil starting to peek through. Whew. Four more seams to go. We got this. It's possible. We can do it. Believe in yourself. Woo. You got this, babe. We got this, kid like hack and base it off of uh, I like to reach for poster board and just start playing with it and seeing what I can do with that and I'll use poster board for foam builds I'll use poster board for fabric builds it weirdly works really well uh, so it'll hold its shape while you cut it into darts and folds and Try to bend a two-dimensional object to your three-dimensional will. Which is basically what you're doing when you're playing with foam and fabric. Foam has a certain amount of stretch to it. Achievable with heat. Fabric heat molding does is work. awesome. What's up? Heat molding is awesome. Heat molding is awesome. Alright, I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. Box knife time. Because okay. this little corner. Yeah, it's nice dress. Obey my will! What's your will? To cut you! Why do you want to cut me? Well... To cut this pattern piece, anyway. I'm speaking as a pattern piece right now. <laughs> How dare you! This is your purpose! Did we make it? Cool. We got past the tricky bit. Aha! And now I see why that piece was so hard to cut there, because that was one of the areas that got a billion layers of tape to try to navigate that curve. As we move past that, it should get a little easier. You okay? Mm. Oh. These, these shoulders are why I was on the fence with Percival. Like, uh -huh. Specifically these shoulders. I'm just uh -huh. like, those things are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> They're gigantic and dumb. <laughs> I mean, I guess they look kind of cool, but you could have done something else. Maybe I'm glad I didn't put more than three layers of tape on this. This does not want to cut.
you do the thing? We're getting there. We're... It's tough. has been really hard to cut, but we're almost there. Oh, we made it. Yeah. All right, now we just got the short seams to go. We're getting there, kids. Last seam. We doing it. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Have the faith. My muscles are fine, it's the scissors that aren't doing so great. <laughs> My guess is the painter's tape is just too tacky. It's also a little thick in spots. Hopefully it's not as bad as that tape. No, it's definitely not as tacky as duct tape. Also, all of our scissors are just really dull. Yeah, we haven't bought new scissors in a long time. Yeah. 
So pro tip, always tear tape. Don't use scissors. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Almost there. I will not be beaten. But it's okay. You only have to do this once. Don't you dare jinx me. Nope, you nailed it. <laughs> nailed it and won. Don't you dare jinx me. Whew. All right. We made it. Now we take all of these bad boys apart. Sweet. This one. These two, so far so good. Three, last but not least. So my skin is too smooth. So silky. So smooth. <laughs> I love you, you're so I ate the smooth smooth fruit. So smooth. pattern pieces. They are not perfectly flat, but that's okay. I was gonna take a progress picture. There's my phone. these bad boys on some poster board. Now the bottom pieces are going to be easier. I want to keep them as flat as I can. 
while preserving the edges of the pattern pieces as true to how they were originally 